or from one Northamptonshire legend to ten others. Ten people from Corby have been named living legends for their contribution to the town. They've all been nominated by local people and an exhibition about them is being launched this evening. Martin Borley is there for us at the party tonight. Martin. James, thanks. I'm here at Corby's Rooftop Art Centre where the exhibition has just opened, as you can see. The living legends range from a shopkeeper to a computer pioneer. They've all been nominated by the public and chosen by a panel. I've been meeting some of the living legends. Young BMXers, skateboarders and scooter riders from across the UK come to Adrenaline Alley. 80,000 of them each year. And the venue is here because of living legend Mandy Young. She started Adrenaline Alley after her 13-year-old son John was beaten up in the street while skateboarding. Let's find somewhere safe um, with the young people in Corby. It wasn't just about John. There was a lot of other young people who wanted their voices heard. Um, but from my point of view, it was about getting John out into the social environment, trying to make him happier um, and giving him some sort of normality. Adrenaline Alley had humble beginnings based in a former chicken processing factory. Now it's one of Europe's biggest skate parks. We're hoping now to develop on to becoming hopefully Europe's performance centre for the Olympic athletes. Um, that's a dream of ours that we hope in the next few months we will be able to make true. Michael Marm is a volunteer researching and recording Corby's history from the closure of the steelworks to the opening of its shiny new buildings. He's been charting the massive changes that have taken place in the town. We took a real battering after the steelworks closed. It was a ghost town. But we, you know, we pulled up with sleeves and we battled and get, got it back in its feet again and it's starting to thrive, it is thriving now. And that's only due to the people. Picking up the pen, I'm expressing once again, it's time I rhymed on my thoughts, I'm a little... Then there's Jamsey. Brought up on Corby's Lincoln estate, he says he was surrounded by drug dealers and teenage alcoholics. Now he helps young people rap, break dance and DJ. I never really had a childhood. I believe, obviously, I grew older before my time. Obviously, I'm 26, but I feel much older. I don't really say that I'm living. I say I'm surviving in life. And with that and the way it made me feel, obviously, I thought I want to give back to kids who are in my position. These are just three of Corby's living legends. Now they're immortalised in a book and this exhibition. And here is the portrait of Jamsey in the exhibition, along with the other nine living legends. The VIP guests here in the uh, exhibition are now enjoying learning about these remarkable characters. The group behind this exhibition is called Made in Corby, and I'm pleased to say that Helen Wilmot from Made in Corby is joining me here. Um, these people were all chosen, nominated by the public, weren't they? Uh, yes, so we offered a, a plea for nominations uh, via social media, and uh, we received over 30 nominations, and the 10 you see around this gallery here were selected by a panel of local people. Were you surprised by these remarkable stories? Uh, some of them we knew and we expected to come in, so things like Malcolm the Fishman is well known around Corby, but other people such as John Parry, uh, who worked on one of the first commercial computers, I had no idea that happened in Corby, so yes, we were surprised. And what do you think it says about Corby and the way the town is changing? Uh, I think there's a large variety of people, there's good diversity in the exhibition, um, and a lot of people that do a lot of different things and do things quietly, and I think that says a lot about the way of Corby people. It's often said that um, Corby is a town that's built on immigration. Do you think this exhibition shows that? Uh, yes, so there's a number of people in the exhibition that have come to Corby from elsewhere. Uh, so Jamsey, who you saw just now, uh, moved to Corby from Glasgow as a child, and that's common of lots of people's experiences of Corby, of coming down from Scotland. Uh, but other people, Putty, uh, other people, John, other people in the exhibition have come from all over the place to call Corby their home. And is there a common theme which brings all these these living legends together? Um, I think probably just community. So actually they have all done something for other people and for the greater good of this town and for our country. So uh, that thing of altruistically doing stuff for other people. Made in Corby has got a, a, a lot of uh, projects on the go, hasn't it? Uh, yes, yeah, so we've been running for four years now. Uh, we're playing a big festival for outdoor arts that will take over the town centre in the summer, in July, um, and another a number of other projects in the pipeline. And I've heard that outdoor festival is going to be a bit like uh, an out, uh, a local Edinburgh festival. Yeah, so we're, it's going to mix between Edinburgh Festival and the street performers on Covent Garden, in Covent Garden. 
So a whole range of slightly mad and crazy performers taking over the shopping centre and the boating lake in Corby. Helen Wilmot from uh, Made in Corby, thank you very much indeed. And the Living Le Legends exhibition is here at the Corby Rooftop Art Gallery and it runs until the 2nd of June. And there's some mar remarkable people here you can all learn about. Martin, great stuff. Thanks very much indeed. Right.